Hello, um, today I will be talking about the lawsuit for Friday the 13th again. Um, <clears throat> so, um, as I said before, the lawsuit was won by Victor Miller. Many were surprised, you know, especially because of Sean Cunningham's co company, Horror Inc., and all that. You know, people thought he was gonna uh, lose, and um, <clears throat> so um, there's two articles. Um, one from October seventeenth, a few days ago, and one from October eighteenth or yesterday. Um, just want to make sure I wasn't thinking of something else. Uh, but anyway, first, uh, for the bloody disgusting uh, article. It's not too long, so here it is. Earlier this month, Friday the 13th writer Victor Miller won uh, a lengthy legal battle against director Sean Cunningham and his Horror, Inc., uh, with a judge ruling that Miller is indeed entitled to the ownership rights in regards to the original film script. What that means for the character of adult Jason Voorhees, who didn't actually appear until the sequels were made, remains to be seen. But it's a big victory for Miller that Cunningham now has a limited amount of time to respond to. Or Rink can either settle with Miller or appeal the ruling. As the entertainment lawyer Friday the 13th Part 3 star Larry Zerner explain, recently explained, so what happens next? Or Rink could, could appeal, but that would be at least two and more likely three to four years of waiting for a resolution. Also, in my opinion, the chance of horror winning on appeal is poor. If Victor, or if horror doesn't appeal, that <clears throat> then it has to make a deal with Victor in order to make a new movie. Victor only owns the U.S. rights to the original movie. Horror owns the foreign rights to the first movie and all the other movies. He added, hopefully Victor and Sean will work something out and get moving on a new Friday the 13th as soon as possible. Providing an update today, Zinner lets us know that Sean Cunningham only has until October 31st. Yes, literally Halloween Day. Uh, go figure. Yeah, that's in a parentheses. To file a notice appeal. If no notice is filed, then they make a deal, Zinner explains. If not, the fight continues for now. Needless to say, we're waiting with bated breath to see what happens next. Well, all seems good, right? Well, you know, um, you know, the month's almost up, so we're halfway done. So, uh, yesterday's article that I saw earlier that day, uh, yesterday <clears throat> has some more stuff uh, about this uh, coming to light. Um, so yesterday, L Larry Zerner mentioned that Sean Cunningham and Horror Inc. had a deadline of October 31st to file an appeal to the ruling in favor of Victor Miller, in which, which saw Horror Inc. lose the lawsuit uh, against the writer of the original Friday the 13th film in a move that hopefully seemed to um, coincidental with yesterday's revelation, Horror Inc. today filed an appeal of that decision, which will now drag out the rights, the battle even longer. And, um, and here's something that I believe is from uh, Twitter, met by, um, <clears throat> Larry Zerner. 
Well, Sean didn't wait until the full 30 days to file the notice of appeal, which I would take to mean that Sean and Victor are not close to reaching a settlement. Larry mentioned to me, the author of this article, that this appeal could take place between 18 and 24 months. There is no settlement reached between Victor and Horink. However, we both agree that there is no way they would drag this out if, or drag this out for that long when there is money being lost by not producing a new film during that time. So stay tuned for the next development. And this article was uh, from Friday the 13th franchise. So, yeah, um... I guess the him filing it, the appeal or whatever, didn't wait for the full 30 days to do so. Um, so, I guess no settlement has been made, and uh, they have until the 31st of October to reach a settlement, then an appeal can be made. So I guess until the 31st, if Victor Miller and Sean Cunningham can't come to some sort of agreement, then it looks as if uh, uh, any new movie is going to take longer. Even though Horror Inc., somebody from there said they're going to make more Friday the 13th movies no matter what, but they kept omitting Jason Voorhees' name in their statement because it seems as if, even though they own the rights to adult Jason with the hockey mask and all, fact is, Jason Voorhees was introduced in the original film as a kid, so they don't have to ever have that version in the new movie, but it would seem... Jason Voorhees' name is owned by Victor Miller in the U.S. And, um, and with the revelation of that, it seems as if uh, by Larry Zerner, who's uh, you know he's a lawyer, uh, an entertainment lawyer, seems as if they're not they don't have a good chance of winning with it this appeal if they do apply again once 30 days and all has been gone through. Um, I guess at which time they can then have an appeal filed and see if get to court and all that. It's just, it, Again, it's just make a deal. Okay, you should have made a deal before. You should have made a deal when this was all brought up when, after 35 years, when Victor Miller properly fi uh, <clears throat> filed the paperwork to do what he could to get the rights back to the Friday the 13th film so he could own the U.S. rights because, well, you know, he wasn't getting really anything. Uh, he doesn't. He didn't get royalties. He doesn't get residuals every month. He mentioned in some interview, someone brought my attention to him, and I made a comment about that, how writers often kind of get screwed when a film they make, it doesn't seem like it's going to be much of anything, and they get paid X amount for their script um, that they wrote and then got bought from them, but they get nothing if it's a big success and possibly turns into a franchise like Friday the 13th. Miller has only gotten... And that article where the guy tried to say he was right and that, well, he has gotten paid because here, and it says so much. Well, if we're going to look at that exact article, what he says is every time there was a new sequel where Jason Voorhees, Cap Crystal Lake, etc. was all used or me at least mentioned, he got money. Uh, so those years that those were being made and or came out, you know, whenever he got paid. 
So from that, he only got paid 11 more times because they always say, you know, characters created by Victor Miller. You know, he created Jason Voorhees. He wrote the original script. He created Mrs. Voorhees. He created Camp Crystal Lake. He created this and that within the films. All that was created by him. So, with all that in mind, yeah, it doesn't seem like Victor Miller got any residuals. And with him owning the original film, he would then get a bit of something. Uh, in addition to any other writing jobs he does, I know he wrote like soap operas and stuff for a time. I'm not sure if he does that still. Um, he won some Emmys for that, but you know, I guess most people don't care about that. Uh, just Friday the 13th. Um, I thought it was interesting just to note of other things he did as to keep the lights on and, you know, what else he did. So there's that. Um, but, yeah, he. I think he just saw the success and he wasn't getting anything except for 11 years outside of the first year where he got a bunch. But, like, 11 years he got paid a, a bit of money because you're going to use his name in the credits. So they're probably like, well, we better pay him uh, so he doesn't, like, do something like try and sue or whatever. And, um, because you created this, so here you go. Here's a seat. We're making a sequel, so here's some money uh, for this. <clears throat> uh, uh, now, franchise that you basically... Had a hand of creating and start. I say a hand because you know Sean Cunningham directed and produced it, but you know it all came from Victor Miller. Um, even though yes, Sean Cunningham did say he they wanted to make a horror movie, and, and uh, Halloween made him a lot of movies. Let's rip it off, and um, that Victor. And that he, he had this campaign without a script of, it says Friday the 13th, the most terrifying film you've ever seen. You know, all that. He created all that, but in the title, but everything else was made by Victor Miller. Uh, in terms of screenwriting and more fleshed out and all. So anyway, um, what seemed as if possibly now they could you know, make some sort of deal, especially since it seems as very unlikely that they could, that Horror Inc. could actually win. If they did appeal, and they would ha just need to just make some sort of deal with Victor Miller, so they could make more movies and get money from the success of that film, so on and so forth. They just need to make it a. They just need to make some sort of deal, really. Victor Miller has no problem with the making a movie, just like you. Are. I just, he just seems to want his fair share of money, of in terms of residuals that he never got, <clears throat> and he just wants. I guess he just sort of wants his fair share on the thing that he helped start, and never got much of anything in return outside of some money uh, the studio gave him when they made sequels and then the reboot. So, if anything else comes out of this, I will again, you know, talk about it. Um, as of now, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Try to mix it up also with this series and the channel. Um, so there you go. Um, things don't seem to be looking like they're getting better with this thing. People, 
great if they could just make some sort of deal, but uh, I guess they don't want to make a deal. So anyway, I'm kind of rambling at this point. So hope you all have a good day, have a good weekend, and uh, you know Halloween came out today. So you gonna see it? Uh, I probably will at some point. Not sure if it'll be this weekend or what, anything, but yeah. Anyway, I'll talk to you all next time. Till then, just have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs>